This week on Gadget, Return of the Ready Naz. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm Father Robert Ballas, heir of the Society of Jesus. That's the California province of the Jesuits, a religious order of the Catholic Church. And we're here again in the Center for Apostolic Technology in San Jose, California, where it's a nice, cool 110 degrees in the shade. We're going to start again this week with a message I received from Joseph in Denver, Colorado. Joseph wrote, Hey, I just downloaded one of your episodes from the Tech Stop. And I want to ask a question, but I don't want to offend you. What is a Catholic priest doing with a show about technology? I mean this sincerely. I'm not trying to make fun of you. Well, Joseph, no offense taken. And no, I don't think you're trying to make fun of me. I think it's a perfectly reasonable and logical question. What is a priest doing with a show about technology? Well, if you go back a couple of episodes, I explained that the Jesuits, that's my religious religious order, have a long history of dealing with the cutting edge of media and technology. That's just one of the things that we're known for. If you look like at some of our institutions, like Santa Clara University, University of San Francisco, Loyola Marymount, Georgetown, Boston College, Fordham, these are all educational institutions that try to keep us out there. One of the ways to get out there has been through the use of technology. And I personally believe that if we want to reach the generation of today, we have to speak their language and their language is technology. Let's get on to the tech. In episode three, we reviewed the Infant Ready NAS. We showed how it had superior performance, superior flexibility, and fantastic recoverability from any sort of disaster. But the form factor didn't really lend itself to the data center or a more professional environment. I mean, it was great to sit on your desktop or under your desk or in a closet somewhere to provide backup for your home office or your small to medium business. But what about enterprise? What about the companies that want a lot of storage and they want a lot of storage in a a space that can be stacked up? Well, that's why we've got the ReadyNAS 1100. Now, the ReadyNAS 1100 actually belongs to Netgear now. You see, a while back, Netgear bought Infrant, a company located in Fremont, California, not too far down the road. And the nice thing about that acquisition is that Netgear has sort of made peace with uh, the Uber geeks at Invert. They've basically told them, look, we, we want to buy you because we want to expand into the more professional storage market, but we want you to maintain control over your products. The end result has been that Infrant has gained distribution, and at the same time, they've kept their engineering staff and all the Uber geeks that made the ReadyNAS line great in the first place. Hardware-wise... The 1100 is totally different from the NV+. It uses four hot-swappable SATA drives in caddies, but they aren't the same size caddies as the ones used by the NV+, meaning that they're not mechanically compatible. However, they are RAID compatible. This means that you can take drives from any ReadyNAS product and install them into any other ReadyNAS unit without losing your data or settings. You just have to exchange caddies. The 1100 uses RAID 5 with an X-RAID implementation, This means that the volumes can be dynamically resized without losing access to your data. Our test of the X-Rate system on the NV Plus proved this point when we pull a drive out of a healthy box and maintained several streams of video. The X-Rate automatically sensed the drive failure and resized the array to fit on the three remaining drives. What we didn't mention in the NV Plus review is that the X-Rate feature allows you to upgrade the drives in your array, one drive at a time, without having to back up your data. You simply replace one drive after the other, allowing the automated recovery system to resync your data each time. This means that you could upgrade your 1 terabyte array to a 4 terabyte array without ever having to touch a keyboard. The 1100 has USB ports for added storage or USB device sharing, dual gigabit Ethernet ports, and the standard complement of drive indicator lights on the front panel. 
The USB sharing feature works as well on the 1100 as it did in the NV Plus, and the dual gigabit feature opens up the options for dual homing the box or aggregating performance. The format of the 1100 has two unique features. First, the 1100 is extremely shallow. This means that in a standard 19-inch network enclosure, you can install two units back-to-back -back in just one U of rack space. Secondly, the entire rear of the unit containing the power supply logic and network interface can be detached and replaced within seconds. The ReadyNAS 1100 uses the same easy-to-use and high-functioning embedded Linux operating system as the NV+. This means that the radar management utility can be used to find and manage all ReadyNAS products on a network. The unit supports Windows, Mac, Unix, and Linux clients out of the box. It can also be configured with plugins like Twonky to take advantage of the latest network media playback devices. The 1100 can operate in one of three security modes. In Share, permissions are set by a simple password. In User, the 1100 could set permissions according to an integrated user list. In Domain, the 1100 inherits its permissions from an Active Directory domain controller. Like the NV+, the 1100 sips rather than gulps electricity. Netgear claims that the unit idles at 70 watts, reaches maximum power at 80, and spins down to 40. Our tests with a power meter confirm those numbers. Put into data center terms, a single 42U enclosure packed with 84 4TB ReadyNAS 1100s would pull 6.7 kilowatt hours of power at full access to 336 terabytes of data. Using price comparable pizza box servers, the same enclosure would pull 7.8 kilowatt hours of power at full access to only 168 terabytes of data. Bottom line, the 1100 compares favorably in metrics of price, performance, robustness, and power draw. For my money, there still is no other unit out there in this class, in this price range, that comes close to touching any of those metrics. The removable chassis is also a very nice feature. Again, if you're not running a data center or a, a large computer plant, you, you may not need it, but it is nice to know that you can just have these modules available for replacement the minute it goes down. Now, we've already seen from the review of the NV Plus and from the quick view of the operating system that this thing recovers incredibly well from any sort of disasters. Everything from power outages to the failure of one of the drives. So th the fact that I can replace the entire logic and power supply unit just adds to that reliability and that flexibility. I also like the fact that the depth does allow me to double mount these things. So in a typical 42U rack, I could put 84 of these units and just have, a, a, what would the technical term be, a buttload of storage. Now, there are a few drawbacks. It's actually using the Padre processor, which is a fantastic piece of silicon that would actually allow for up to eight drives in the same device, but it's slightly less powerful than the processor that's contained in the NV+. Now, you won't notice this. The performance is, is the same. The responsiveness of the operating system is the same. The only difference is that it draws less power. And at the top end, if you were to really load this down with services, you might notice the performance difference. But I think it's, it's, it's more than a good trade-off to get this form factor. Also, I would have liked to have seen the, uh, the LCD that came on the NV+. I know there's not a whole lot of space up here in the front, but that was one of the selling points. And again, if you look at the review of the NV+, in Episode 3 of Gadget, you'll see that at first I didn't know what that was there for. It was, I thought it was a gimmick. But it actually does come in very useful to have a little screen that can give you real-time information on how the array is doing. Plus, you know, giving you things like IP address if you're using a DHCP server or the, the, the status of drive recovery. It was nice to get that without having to go into a client. Still, this isn't bad. I mean, I, I understand that they have to build for the space that they have, and, and this is what they had. If I had to choose among all the options for storage in this form factor, I would definitely go with the, the Netgear product, uh, which I find myself kind of surprised to say. But yeah, it, they, have, they have bought a winner in Infront. If you want to learn more about the 1100, you can actually go to www.thetechstop.net, click on the Gadget tab, and you'll be able to read our full review of the 1100 and our review of the NV+. If you'd like to send us an email message, you can write to gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. Thanks for watching, and I want to remind you that uh, there's no Uber Geek.
without you.